What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and on the home of Epic Conversations, 2020 Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers. It's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And in 2023, 2022, and 2021, our team has reached out directly and indirectly to over 100,000 fathers and dads around the world. I also am a featured contributor to the Fly Nubian Queen YouTube network, which has 570,000 subscribers. And coming up in the next few weeks, going to be having content shared on the Indie Soup Media platform out of the US, and there reaches 1 million people. That's it. That's all. We only got a little bit of time with this wonderful person today. So I'm just going to bring her on the screen because... You know, I just I just need to just bring her on the screen. We're going to be sh- sh- chopping it up with the Honorable Kamal Kara, Canadian Minister of Diversity, Inclusion, and Persons with Disabilities. What is up? <laughs> well, happy Friday and a very happy Black History Month, Dr. Vibe. It's Thank so you. good to see you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come on your show and to talk about the incredible work that we're doing together. Um, and just on a side note, it's just always... Um, Anytime I come on, we have we really do have epic conversations. So I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And you know, when you talk about Black history, um, I, I just want to take a moment to thank you, um, and because you really are a good story of making Black history every single day as a work that you're doing to getting those stories out there in the community. And it's important for me to recognize you. So I just wanted to first and foremost wish you a very happy Black History Month, um, and to talk about all things um, that we're, we're doing, things that we mm-hmm. need to do and some exciting things that are that, that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, well, Rasi, that thank you so much, so much. And I'm just going to do it real quick. For people who don't know about me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also hit the notification button. You can also follow me on Facebook, links, LinkedIn, and Instagram at The Dr. Vibe Show. And also, please advertise. If you want, advertise your business product or service on our platform by emailing me at dr. V-I-B-E at the dr. V-I-B-E S-H-O-W. Dot com and big shout out to Laurent, my man who makes things happen, especially this. Okay. He needs to get his props. All right, get into it because I know our time is limited. Absolutely. Look, um, let me just again reinforce the fact that you know it's been such an incredible a month. You know, February is my favorite month. Um, and you know, theme for Black History Month this year, as you may know, uh, it really has been about you know, Black excellence, a heritage to uh, celebrate and a future to build. And it really is about, you know, taking a moment to recognize that incredible, incredible contributions of Black trailblazers who have made history, who continue to make mystery uh, uh, a history, and to uh, continue to work on a path uh, to make sure that we're building a better future for all Canadians. And, you know, one of the things I've often reflected on is the fact that, um, you know, when I got elected back in 2015 um, and the work that we started at that time. Um, and when in 20, um, in 2016, when Canada uh, worked alongside so many incredible members of Black trailblazers across the country, um, and when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, alongside our Black caucus, announced that Canada became the very first country, uh, West, Western country in the world, to officially recognize the United Nations um, uh, decade for people of African descent. And that really led to us to have a roadmap in terms of the work that we need to do to address um, a the challenges, the systemic challenges to address systemic you know racism that we've seen in our institution, but also for things that the community has been asking for. You know whether it is economic empowerment, whether it is you know taking a whole of government approach to ensure that we are supporting Black Canadians throughout this country because it's not just good for Black Canadians; it's actually good for Canada. Um, and so it's been an incredible uh, journey since then, um, as you may know. Since then. You know, whether uh, it it is the Black entrepreneurship program that we put forward um, that is actually supporting Black entrepreneurs all across Canada. Um, And, you know, you were at actually one of the events with me, Dr. Vibe, uh, with the uh, Black Health Professionals Network who were able to take advantage of this program, built this um, healthcare network of Black professionals, um, health professionals right across the board to make sure that we are working with community members so people know that, you know, there are different challenges within different 
different communities and, and, and that is being reflected on that. You know, you won't believe an organization, um, and this really was about, you know, access to capital gain. This really was about uh, making sure that there's those networking opportunities and for businesses, black businesses to actually scale up. And because of that, you know, more than, you know, 500 businesses right across uh, just through one organization face, you know, $50 million they've invested to help over 500 businesses get access to capital gains. This is black led businesses to in, in, in order for us to support that work. When you talk about, you know, the work through our um, supporting black communities initiative, you know, this is black led black serving community organizations that we're supporting through black funders, um, you know, all the way from Nova Scotia to in, 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 in Ontario um, and, and right across the board. And, you know, when you talk about the stories of resiliency, when you talk about the work that's happening, uh, it is quite remarkable. Um, and one of the things that I'm so excited to tell you is that, um, by the way, we missed you at the Black History Gala that we hosted. Uh, you know, oh, you, you, you went offline on that I and you come back that. with, okay, but how long have I been asking to get some of your time? So touche, but you know what? Received, received. <laughs> and when that time happens, we'll take the picture, we'll go live on Instagram and say it was reality. It was happening. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but, you know, I have to tell you, um, last week we had over thousands of black trailblazers from right across the country that came to Ottawa where we celebrated Black History Month. And it really was a chance to not just, you know, get together to celebrate, but talk about what more we can do. And that's where the prime minister officially announced, announced that Canada will be extending domestically the UN decade till 2028 in Canada. This really is something that the community has been asking for. Um, something that community is saying, you know, like the UN decade is ending what is Canada going to do? But Canada, obviously, uh, since we weren't in power, like we 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 signed the decade, obviously, a, a bit later. And we wanted to make sure that we continue to do this work together, you know, whether it is uh, to address the, the overrepresentation of, uh, you know, Black, Indigenous Canadians in our criminal justice system, whether it is a work that we need to continue to support, uh, you know, taking a whole of government approach and addressing some of the systemic challenges, but also, you know, making sure Sure that we are there for the community, whether it is the entrepreneurship program, whether it is the you know supporting Black communities initiative, whether it is the endowment fund and the non for profit, that we are talking about Black excellence every single day. Because I always say diversity is a fact in Canada, but inclusion is a choice. And as a government, we have been very deliberate in the investments that we're making, and we're gonna, we're going to continue to make sure we're supporting uh, Black Canadians because it actually leads to a better Canada. Uh, for all Canadians. Fantastic. i uh, going to ask you one or two conversation pieces because I, I heard your notification in the background, so I'm going to definitely be cognizant of your time. Yes. Where do you, where does your government, what do you need from us to amplify? Because yes, you're putting a lot of stuff out there. Yes. What, how can we make it better for your government and for all Canadians? This is such an incredible question because, you know, I get to meet so many incredible organizations all across Canada. In fact, I'm going to Nova Scotia and, um, you know, next week to meet with some of the amazing work that's happening there as well through our Black um, uh, Supporting Black Communities Initiative. Um, but I think it's important, you know, it's one thing talking about like, okay, we're investing X, Y, Z money into this community, but what is the impact of that work? And I think we don't share enough of those stories. And, you know, I'll take some blame for that as well. And I really am trying to amplify some of the work that's happening because unless we share our work and what this means for Canadians, I mean, I, I, I find that we're not, we're not quite there yet. So I think what it would be extremely important is to showcase some of the work that's been happening. You know, I um, some of the work that's happening, and give me, let me give an example, the NIA Center um, for Arts in York, you know, that's Canada's first ever professional black arts center. That's what the work has led to, you know, it has meant to have been able to, uh, you know, to get more, they were able to get more equipment, they were able to create new programs to better support black artists. You know, you talk about in Montreal, the uh, campaign theater uh, Creole from Montreal which works with 
marginalized communities of young people from low-income families through arts to educate, to combat, you know, domestic violence, to talk about, you know, mental health issues. When I talk about some of the business communities, I mean, I've seen that, you know, in my own community for Aspire for Hire, like because of the work, because of the little investment, sometimes it's like, you know, it's just access to capital gain, uh, access to capital loans. It's about networking opportunities. It's about making sure that we have trusted partners to scale up your businesses because, how do you empower communities? You have to give tools to be able to very um, be very uh, deliberate about making those investments, right? And I think it's so important that we talk about the work that we're doing, our showcase that work, and something that I will be working with the community members. And this is where I think you also play a big part in telling those stories is around telling these stories yeah. because there's incredible amount of work that's happening with leaders and 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 i think it's important to one of the things that i think we really honed in on that it is black led black focus we can't do the work unless people in the community are part of it and from the start to the end that's been um that's been the the the, the formula for the success of th this work but i think we need to do a better job at showcasing those stories and i think that's where you play an incredibly important <laughs> role in making that happen so i will take you up on that my friend and and get you to tell these amazing stories yeah. right, right across canada no problem you were reading my alleged mind i was going to say <laughs> suggestion tell them they've got a home here They've yes. got a home here. Absolutely. Uh, what are some of, and again, this is probably our last conversation piece. What are some of the common challenges you're hearing from African Canadian voices? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. And, you know, when you talk about, and, and there's different pillars, and I think the UN decade really framed um, the roadmap to address some of those challenges. You know, when I talked about uh, the real challenges within our criminal justice system. Uh, the real challenges, and that's the over-representation of Black Canadians in our criminal justice system. And we've made some deliberate changes. Uh, we've made some, uh, in fact, I think last time I came on, we were talking about the, the, the Black justice strategy. That yes. work is absolutely ongoing to make sure that it is feeding all the information that's happening. Uh, whether it is, um, you know, uh, the work that needs to happen to, you know, the smaller communities that are on the ground, right? Because you have these big organizations. And I think one of my, um, uh, one of my things that I, I work with the community is how do we kind of build this network of organizations that are providing this support to communities um, and to make sure that we're amplifying, amplifying, amplifying those voices for, for the community. And third is really about that economic empowerment. Um, you know, there's so many incredible black businesses. In fact, you know, um, I know you were mad that I was having a, a really good, uh, I was having some jerk chicken with one of your good friends at, in Brampton, um, where Who I introduced you to, absolutely. I'll leave it at that. Keep on absolutely. going. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but it really is about amplifying. Also, you know, it was for um, uh, we were celebrating obviously the Restaurants Week, uh, supporting Black communities. It was important to, and you know, Brampton. Yeah, no, no, uh, I don't I mind that. A, I know, but I have to give I a special mind. shout out to Brampton because we have amazing, amazing uh, Black businesses right across the country, and I have been able to. Uh, work with different members. I want to amplify amplify those voices. But to your point around um, the challenges, I think what the stand, you know, with the Black Entrepreneurship Program that is Black led, uh, that is supporting the work that you know the, the Canadian uh, Chambers of Commerce is doing to make sure you know uh, get access through our BDC, which is a loan um, a a facilitator. It really is about giving that economic empowerment. And I think um, that is one of the things that I've been working really hard with taking a whole of government approach, you know, if we're really going to make change. And I think we have to be very deliberate about that change. So um, I know we're going to have some very, very exciting uh, things also um, as we move forward. And as always, I will be back on your show to talk about what more we can do to support the community every single time. But I think extending the UN decade uh for the people of african descent it highlights our government's commitment to ensure that we are committed to support black community because we know as a government it actually leads to a better canada um and this has been um something that i know i've, I've been having many conversations with members of the black community and we're going to continue to make sure that those voices are amplified all right that's a wrap that's a wrap if people want to get in touch with this Wonderful lady, Kamal Kara Lib. 
Instagram and she's very active on that when she has time. <laughs> so, so as always, I want to say thank you for taking the most important thing you have time out of your personal life, your family life and check out her Instagram family. She has a really good post on Valentine's Day. I'm going to say what it is, but uh, to your family and as always, don't just manage your time, manage your energy and remember to give yourself grace and uh, you'll be hearing from me today via Instagram because we, we have some things to chat about, but Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of Black History Month. Thank you. And we're going to be celebrating Black History Month every single month. So thank you. And thank Received. You. Received. Thank you. And have an amazing, amazing uh, day in the rest of the week. Thank you. Take care and stay warm. Bye. <laughs> All right. There we go, family. Great conversation as always. And I'll put her contact information back on the Instagram. Great. And... That's a wrap. That was a quick, that was a quick, that's one of the quickest conversations. Whenever I get uh, policies on, it's really quick because they got packed schedules. So also big thanks to Laurent to help make that happen. So as always, if you want to get in touch with me, website, the drvibeshow.com, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, the dr period vibe show. Instagram at the drvibeshow and X at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. You can catch replays of this epic conversation at the Dr. Vibe Show YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And also my website, the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com. So as always, this is how we end off our conversations. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions. Then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourself grace and don't just manage your time, manage your energy. God bless. Peace to well. Keep the faith and walk good. <laughs>